So aircraft emit NOx or nitrogen oxides. <coughs> this in turn produces ozone. Now ozone is a greenhouse gas, so it will lead, so it will contribute to global warming. It's basically about non-CO2 effects, so bringing awareness to how CO2 is not the only concern. We also have other factors to consider, and one thing I focused on was NOx emissions. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you talk about the NOx emissions of planes, do we have an idea of the severity of these uh, emissions? So it's quite comparable even um, to the CO2 effect in the short run, so it's definitely not something that we can neglect. Um, so most people always talk about CO2 being the main concern, but we definitely need to focus also on other things like contrails, also NOx in the short term because it produces ozone, and ozone is very bad for our environment. So yeah. Now, depending on where an aircraft flies, you can end up with completely different emission trajectories, and therefore climate effects. What I've been modeling is the motion of their emissions, and not necessarily the flight of the aircraft yet. So modeling where aircraft th should fly is the, basically the next step. You can use information about these trajectories to pick the most green route as a next step. So I've been modeling motion of air parcels, so of the emissions essentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in the first one, we see that there's a sharp descent to lower altitudes where ozone is removed far more rapidly. In the second one, in the second path, we see more gradual descent which leads to more efficient ozone accumulation in higher altitudes. So it's clear to us that path one is the green alternative and not so much path two. So by linking where an aircraft flies with, it, with its emission trajectory and associated climate effects, we can actually guide uh, aviation towards the greenest routes. Is, is there an impact of when uh, a plane travels? Yeah, so during summer in general in the northern hemisphere you ought to have a larger impact because there's more sunlight and you need sunlight to indirectly produce this ozone from NOx. So we found that during summer you have more of an effect than during winter in the northern hemisphere and the inverse is true for the other uh, hemisphere, for the southern hemisphere. If you talk about uh, the modeling itself, um, how, 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 how do you approach something like that? Because it seems like a really big thing to just model Earth and <laughs> how particles travel. Yeah, so basically we're using a climate chemistry model. It's, yeah, it's like you say, it's quite complex. You have a base model that models how um, basically the air travels, temperature, pressure, and all these things. And then we have basically little sub-models that we can turn on to address certain issues so we can see where an emission is going, how much of a certain compound is being produced at each point of the trajectory. So yeah, in, in a few words, it's definitely complex using a, a climate chemistry model. Yeah. Recommendations that you would have for the aircraft industry for the way basically aircraft uh, are flown. What, what, what are your recommendations that you can kind of get out of your research already? Right, so that's still a little premature because this is the essential step that needs to be taken so that the other step where you can start pl you can start planning the green routes occurs. So you have to model the emissions first to see what the overall climate impact is at several points in the globe and then use that data to then power tools that can redirect aviation as it is. And do you already have interest in your uh, methodology or in your uh, research from, from outside of the university? From outside, well, I'm working also with the German Aerospace Center and we're developing the next step. So looking at aerosols, now aerosols are way more unknown. So I would say that's the, the bridge or the next step and the main sort of uh, work institution that we're, we're partnering with to make this happen. That's not just about CO2, right? There's much more than CO2 uh, involved in this. It's also about the NOx, the ozone, the water vapor, the cloud formation, the whole or the whole chain of events that fits in, which is even bigger than the effect of CO2 itself. Uh, this insight will have a huge impact in how we will arrange our flying behavior, the flight patterns in the future. Which makes us make this choice uh, to choose your paper as the, the winner for this uh, selection. So, congratulations. So what are your plans for the future? Yeah, I'm interested in this whole green aviation idea and I don't know if I'll stay in academia or in industry. That really is, it's a matter of just continuing this topic of green aviation. Whether industry allows that better or academia is still to be determined, I think.